Hey guys, it's Kate and I am here today with a package that was just delivered. Now the only thing I have done so far is take it out of its main bag, but this is everything I got. I kept hearing about people buying things on there and I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, is this the new wish.com where, you know, I've seen videos where somebody bought a Halloween costume that when they received it, it kind of felt like that material you get for, you know, birthday party tablecloths, the plastic ones. So I took a couple chances. I heard good things about these acrylic painters. So I wanted to definitely try these. I got some golden ink. I got a watercolor palette. I got a couple of brushes that one of them looks a little questionable, but we'll try it. <laughs> I got some palette knives, color wheels, gold and silver paint markers, and rice paper here at the bottom of the pile. So I have never used rice paper. If you've ever used rice paper for painting, let me know in the comments below because I don't even know if I'll be using this right, but I thought it would be so fun to test it out. So let's get going. First, and these are the ones I'm probably not going to use on camera today. Now, when I first pulled these out, I was thinking to myself, boy, these look not too bad. Um, they feel sturdy. Let me get them out of the wrapper. These actually feel pretty good. This wood is unfinished. I think these cost me about $3 for the whole set, but surprisingly, they feel really nice. They have a little bit of give to them but I think they'll work really well. The handles are unfinished wood, so they're, um, you know, not, like they, they don't have that glide, like if they had lacquer or any type of finishing on it, um, but they don't feel like they'll give you a splinter either. They're pretty smooth. So these will be kind of fun to experiment with. I guess the question will be whether or not they rust after using them a few times, but, for the price, I'm pretty happy I got these to try. So I'll look forward to using these in some future videos and paintings. So if they do rust, I will give an update. So next up, I got a couple of color wheels. And I just thought they'd be fun to have. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have trouble coming up with a palette. I'm pretty good with mixing colors and I like to mix colors straight on my palette but I like that these kind of give you a quick little guide so I got two and they're each a little bit different so this one has more tints and shades and also you know when you add white add black and so forth and this one has you know your complementary and all of those. So it will um, give you some good palettes to use. And they also have this on the back in a larger size. So I think I'll enjoy using these um, in different projects and just see if it if it makes things feel a little bit more intuitive. So for, for what I got, um, this was as expected and I think these were a couple of dollars as well. Actually, everything here was pretty much a couple of dollars. All right, next up are these. So I really wanted to get a couple of quill brushes. And I actually have another one on order from Amazon. I have uh, my cat's tongue brush that I really enjoy using. And I've got some a set of round brushes that I enjoy too. But I have uh, never used a quill brush, and so I was really excited to try some. Now, I bought one um, that's on its way, but then I saw these on Timu, and I thought I would go ahead and pick them up. I think as far as brushes go, the quill brushes are pretty expensive. I mean, they range from, I, I saw them ranging from $30 to hundreds for a single brush. Um, and these ones looked interesting. These were a few dollars each, so I thought I would give them a try. Now, without having removed them from the packaging yet, I was looking at this one, and it kind of looks like you can see through where the brush kind of meets the handle. And I don't know 
if you can see that or not. Let me see if I can get it to focus. And the, it, I don't know. I don't know if it's attached in there very well. So we'll try these out and see what happens. Next up, I've got some of these acrylic painters. So these are paint markers, and I actually only meant to get the white, but I accidentally got both. So I have a pack with three white and three black, and a pack with six white. And I'm always on the search for a really nice white paint marker. It's just hard to find them opaque enough to have just that that chef's kiss coverage on a dark color. So I'm excited to try these out too. I also picked up some gold and silver metallic markers, so we'll try these. And golden ink. So I'm pretty excited about this too, and we'll see how this works on paper. And then I got this little palette. It is the Ocean 24 Color Retro Watercolor Palette, and it feels pretty heavy. I believe they're half pans, but I'll open this up and get started and do some swatches. And last but not least, this very wrinkled rice paper. <laughs> so this is how it shipped to me. It is definitely, it has seen better days. Um, the brand is Marie's, it says on the tag. Um, and so we will give these a try. It may be a giant disaster, but we will experience that together. <laughs> so I'm going to get this stuff unwrapped and I will see you back here in a minute. Okay, I'm back and my stuff has been unwrapped. So I've got this rice paper and it's got um, a smooth side and a rough side. So I might try painting on both. Um, it's definitely very wrinkled, it's very thin, and I am sorry, I've never used it before, so I don't really know <laughs> how it's supposed to feel, but it's going to be fun to play with. So like you can see, it's kind of translucent because you can see the watercolor palette underneath it here. Um, but as a side thing, I'm also, uh, I grabbed a piece of my cotton watercolor paper this is B paper, and so I'm going to paint on both just so I can kind of get a feel for the difference, especially since I'm going to be using this new palette. So this is that um, retro watercolor palette. It's 24 colors. It's glittery, and I actually didn't know that um, until now. <laughs> so I was kind of excited about it because it has sort of earth tones. Oh, that's so cute. It has a little swatch paper on here and it kind of looks like a compact. <laughs> so you can open it up, I guess. Okay, this is really cute. All right, so here's the little swatcher and these colors are looking pretty good. I like how sort of neutrally they look. They do have a bit of a shine to them. They're in plastic um, plastic pans, but they're pretty, they seem deep, but these are about half pan size and we've got a pretty good color selection going here. So I've got this. Here are the two quill brushes. So this one had a little damage in shipping. So just so you know, everything came in basically a plastic bag. <laughs> So I'm really um, happy that it's not more damaged since it, it came a long way in a plastic bag, but the, um, the paper is just, I'm just sort of disappointed in how wrinkly it was, but honestly, I wasn't really expecting much with this order, so I'm pretty, pretty pleased. But these brushes feel pretty full and feel pretty good. It's got that residue on it, so I'll, I'll have to give it another feel once it's been in water. It comes to a nice point. It feels pretty firmly in there. And let's see this one. This one feels pretty full too. It's not really moving, but I'm going to actually use 
my number four round brush to do my swatch just because these pans are pretty little and I want to do a decent swatch so I am going to use their little swatch card and my jar of water that I have over there and just go in order so these are supposed to be metallic I guess let me grab my spray bottle move these to the side a little bit here we go we'll start with this first <laughs> okay I'm excited to use these so it almost <laughs> looks like it's repelling the water a little bit I don't know if you can see that in there that's kind of interesting so we'll see what happens when I dip into it. I think this whole palette was about six dollars. So we'll start here. It picks up nicely with the brush. Huh. Okay. Let's see what you got there. Okay. Let me get my paper towel to blot. There's actually still paint in the brush, even though I gave it a pretty good rinse. Okay, let's pick this up. Huh. I don't see any colors listed on this at all, so don't know what I'm dipping into but it is fun. You know, they're, they're pretty rich. I'm not mad at them. <laughs> I'm sort of surprised. Now it's going to look a certain way once it dries, but I barely have to touch these. What? What is the deal? Wow. I've been trying to get more into the earthy tones, and so I'm really pumped up to have these. Now, as far as glitter, I don't know. Let me see these. It doesn't seem incredibly shiny, which actually is fine with me because I kind of bought them with the expectation that be, they'd be matte. So I'm fine with that. And I didn't even see on the description. Now, there's a lot of versions of brown, but this is that it's like a retro color set, it says. DDD praise, I suppose. And it's ocean color. So if you want to search these and get it to try, you know, for $6, my goodness. <laughs> Not bad. All right, let's keep doing these swatches. That's nice. I enjoy that. I get it. And they spread nicely. DDD praise. Come on. What are you What are you doing with these palettes? Wow. I'm trying to make sure I dip into the right Ooh. I'm going to enjoy these. I can tell you now. I may have found a new palette that I like. I mean, there's so much color in this. What? I'm barely touching it. Now, some of these are kind of similar, but the colors themselves are really nice. So, I mean, it's almost like you just have, you know, a full pan, let's just say. 12 full pans. <laughs> All right. Oh, this one kind of looks like a violet, but it's so dark. It's hard to say. Oh, that's nice. That's like a really nice neutral. This one might be a lot brighter, almost like a 
like a royal purple or something. And they like to flow. They like to spread. <laughs> Scampy, my cat, says hello. I don't know if you can hear her or not, but when I'm in here in the evenings doing my videos, she always likes to pop in and say hi. <laughs> That's a beautiful green. That's nice. I'm going to try to get some of that water off of there. I like that a lot. That's still the cat, by the way, if you can hear it. She <laughs> she's all over the place today. I was out of town for about a day and a half. The other half and I both were out of town and so she was missing us when we came back home. <laughs> and so she's kind of been like a little shadow. It's pretty cute. Ooh. This is just really, that's good stuff. This is good stuff. <laughs> I'm just tickled at this palette. Look at that. I mean, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? I'm barely touching it in the in the pans. just get really excited about things that probably most people wouldn't really care that much about. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like, oh my god, that blue, it's amazing. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. some painting. Oh, this is what they call a magical experience. I hope they dry as nicely as they look while they're wet. Now, I will say, oh, that's kind of a nice silver. That one might actually have these bottom three right here might have a little bit of a sheen. They look a little more metallic than the other ones, but I'm going to lift this up just so you can kind of see right now. Look at these rich colors. I mean, come on. They're still wet. So some of that shine is just moisture, but I mean, look at those. I'm going to do the last two. And then I'm going to see how they blend. Oh, look at that. Man. That's something. Okay. I think I've got my palette. I'm going to move my blotters over to the side. You got to have the blotters. <laughs> I mean, this is water heavy work we've got going on here. So I'm going to grab my B paper first. And I'm going to set this up here to dry and kind of move it right over here to the side. And I'm just gonna play with some color. Now, since I'm done with the swatches, I'm gonna grab one of these new quill brushes. So I've got a size seven and a size five, and they're, I mean, I, I think they're different brands. I'm not going to try to say either of those, 
um, but they also both say Art Brush China. So I'm guessing they're made by the same company. So I'm going to go with the size 5, which is a little bit smaller, and get that in the water and see how it goes. So it holds a lot of water, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to get a quill brush is I've just, they look so magical to use. Now, before I dip into the paint, I'm just kind of feeling this tip, and this is nice and soft. It's got decent snapback. Um, I believe this is a synthetic, so that makes sense that it would have snap, which if you're looking for that, that's good. Now, if you um, compare that with some other brushes that might have natural fibers, which I actually don't have one on hand at the moment, um, but they won't have, you know, they'll kind of, you bend them and they will just stay the way that you kind of bend them. But I like the snap. <laughs> so um, I'm pretty happy to work with that and I'm just kind of getting situated. I dipped my hand in that pigment and you know I just wiped it off and it's still there. So we'll see. Now these, I can see the surface is um, kind of a little gummy looking. I don't know what kind of binders and stuff they've used with this. So, you know, keep that in mind, but I mean, for $6 and pretty rich color selection, I am very happy with this. I don't expect it to be any kind. I mean, if you were making art to sell, don't use these, <laughs> but for crafting, for greeting cards, for just about anything else that you would do, I think these would be a fabulous selection. Now. And especially if they stay at that $6 price point. I mean, my goodness, there's a lot you can do with $6 and this palette. Okay, so this is my first go around using a quill brush. So I'm going to try to get the hang of it, but I am going to go into color 21, whatever this is. <laughs> and I'm going to start getting this down on the paper. Boy. Look at that. And this holds a lot of water too. That's nice. I feel like I could just paint forever. Wow. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with the brush. All right, going to give this a good rinse and go in with another color. How about this sort of green color over here? Oh, look at that. It's just wonderful. Now, it doesn't look like these travel a bunch, which is okay. It did seem to travel more over here though, so uh, maybe it's the paper, maybe it's something else, but we'll see. But look at that. I mean, these are just really not, I mean, it's rich, but also kind of muted, which I'm really liking right now. Let's see about going in with a lighter color. Um, how about this? I mean, none of these are really terribly light. <laughs> so, we'll see. Oh. Look at that. And the quill brush for the win. But that's some rich color. And I'm going to come right in here and do some mixing. Now it's not really got a bunch going on with the moving on the page once you lay down the color. But I really dig that. That's nice. i come in just with a little bit more of this. And 
and I'm going to come in and blend it here. Nice. Now, which one of these did I use? How about this? Now, my paper is still kind of wet right here, and that helps it move. You can see that. So, I think if you do some wet on wet, and I mean my paper just sops up that water, or so does the brush actually. I mean I'm just kind of blotting it. Now I'm going to try to lift. This lifts really nicely as well. I mean, I feel like I'm painting with just a big mop. <laughs> another, another rinse. Hmm. Don't mind it. Come in some more yellow here. What do you think? I like this palette. Well, so some of these colors, they do tend to stay sort of still. I enjoy this brush. I need to get the hang of using it. Um, it's a little bit different. It, it holds a lot more water. So, um, it's just going to take some playing around, but I'm going to come back in here and do some doodling once this is dry. So I'm going to set this aside and in the meantime, grab that rice paper. So now I know how it looks on cotton paper. I'm going to try it on some of this rice paper. Um, I have my rice paper. This is the smooth side, and I'm actually not sure which side to really paint on. There's a rough side underneath, so what I'm going to do is paint on both. So I've got the size 7 quill brush, and I'm going to try this one on the rice paper. So I'm going to give it a good rinse in my jar of water that I have sitting behind it, and this is one fat brush <laughs> and it just feels soaked so i'm going to blot it a little bit on the side over here and this one also has not quite the same snap back as the other one but still quite a bit um, but it comes back to its point pretty quickly it feels nice and full holds a lot of water. I mean, when I dip it in the brush and then I kind of rub it on the side of the jar, a lot of excess comes out. So probably you could paint <laughs> a giant wash with one of these. So I am going to dip into this purple color. And I, this is my first time ever painting on rice paper, so I really don't know what to expect, but I'm just going to try some brush strokes. Oh, so the paper really soaks up the water. It doesn't really seem to move a whole lot, but this looks pretty nice. I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush. Go back into this purple. Oh, that's not bad. That's kind of fun. It's a lot different than paper, but it doesn't feel... Um, like you are going to break the paper, but it definitely does not spread like it does on watercolor paper. That's a really interesting surface. So I added a little center there. 
I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to dip into this green. And make a couple of leaves. So the water spreads a lot more there. So I'm thinking I need to cut back maybe a bit on the water. So I just blotted my brush and I'm going to go over this again. And we'll have to see how this dries. Because I'm really interested to see like how the color actually spreads out on this. This is a really terrible flower. But <laughs> it's all in the name of experimentation, you know. <laughs> this is a lot of fun though. I'm going to come in here with a little bit of yellow, too. Seems to take a second stroke pretty well. You know, the paper doesn't seem to be, you know, ready to tear apart or anything like that. So that's nice. Now I wonder if you could do a blend. So let's just say I took this green here and painted it. Now if I go back in with another color, let's say this yellow again, and I come in here right away, it doesn't, boy, you know, it's not, it's not like paper at all, but it really blends nicely along that line while it's still wet, huh. Let me see about adding another color. <clears throat> Let me go in with this purple. And I'm gonna put that right here next to the yellow. And it just seems to kinda go on pretty nicely. It's got very soft edges. I don't know how that will dry, but that's a nice little gradient. I don't know if you can see that really well or not. Let me try another one. I'll probably just be making gradients all the way across the paper. <laughs> okay, let's do this blue. We'll just have fun with it. So is this, for those of you who use rice paper, is this what it's supposed to kind of be like? I don't know. It's kind of fun to paint on. And because of its transparent quality, it would, I, I actually got it because I was thinking I could do some interesting little abstract painting on it and put it on something like a collage and it would be um, transparent with the, with the medium that I used to attach it. So I think there's definite possibilities here, but the gradient just, I don't know, the soft edges are really nice, I think. But also, you know, where I had my brush stroke starting up here, you have that really nice concentrated color. And also, I'm going to have to try the rice paper again with my regular watercolors. I have some uh, Winsor Newton Cotman set, and I've got a couple other palettes that I can use and just see how this takes other brands that are a little bit better quality than what we have here. This is very pigmented and really fun to use, but um, I'll have to try it with some of the other ones as well. But I like this and I'll have to see how this dries. But I'm gonna grab another sheet and do this, something similar to this on um, the rough side and see if that makes any difference. So I'll be right back. Okay, back with another sheet of this rice paper and now I'm on the rough side. And it looks kind of like a little grid almost. I mean, very close up, you can see some texture to it. So I'm going to grab the same brush. So I'm going to go back in with the number five and 
just check out if this takes paint a little bit differently than the other paper. And I'm also going to go in with my small round brush. Um, you know, this has a lot of water in it. So, so even when I blot, it kind of spreads out on the paper a lot. And so I'm sure that there are people who would do more delicate watercolors on this paper. So I'll go in with a smaller brush with less water and try to keep my strokes a little bit more contained. But right now it's just experimenting and fun. So let's go in to a couple of these. And I'm just gonna... Ooh. That's pretty nice. Now it does seem to get like a little dry right there. And that might be the brush too. But I'm trying not to paint with so much water. You know, going slow seems to help a lot with that too. That's nice. Okay. Now I do see a little bit of the texture coming through, so I'm going to come in here, do something like I did before with just the, all the water I used. You can see it just kind of pooling out. Um, I don't know, to me it doesn't look a lot different, but I'm trying to compare it to my other sheet that I have over here drying. And rough side versus smooth side. Do you see a difference? I don't really. So, but we'll keep going. I'm going to move this back out of the way so I can get my, my blotting area. <laughs> okay, let's go in with some of this gray or silver, whatever it is. Number 23, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> it definitely paints a lot different. It seems to be really highly pigmented toward the beginning of my stroke and really fades out by the end. Although with this one, when I go a lot slower, it's a very even stroke even though but it but even still with this one it is still much more pigmented toward the top so let's try this greenish one here and see and i'm gonna just kind of play around with some colors it's almost like if i give the paint time to come off the brush it really releases itself. But I will say these don't spread as much. But these brushes are great because look at that fine tip I can get just by barely touching it. And that's one reason I one reason I wanted a quill brush. You can get so thick. Which one was I in? This one? it'll be that one. You can get thick and then come right up and do some little marks. So there's a lot of freedom with these quill brushes. So I was really excited. I mean you could do small details like let's just say that was grass. And there you go. And I mean look how fat it is with water. <laughs> paint for days before you dip again. I'm going to give this a rinse. I'm definitely going to have to play some more with this though. Seems like the pigment just kind of comes off the brush. I'm going to have to also compare these to the new quill brush I get um, that's going to be coming in I think next week so I might have another comparison video up and I this video is probably going to be way too long I'm just sitting here playing with paints and inks <laughs> so hopefully you're not bored to tears I'm 
but I enjoy this a lot. Okay, let's go back in with the screen. And then come right down. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna set this quill brush aside and go in with my regular number four round. It holds a lot less water and I can also see how it kind of works with this pigment. I'm trying to find one I haven't really dipped into yet. Probably this one here. So let's see how this works. And that sort of dry brush look, that's kind of nice too. wonder what happens if I kind of dip back in with the water. Not much. <laughs> Oops, I'm a little bit far down. Oops. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Oh, I got my first rice paper tear right there. Hello. <laughs> so it is pretty delicate, so it was kind of sticking to my palette. And when I tried to slide it, I got that little tear there. So, hey, with rice paper, be careful. I thought it was a lot more sturdy than it was. But boy, it's pretty neat. I think this will make some interesting collage paper. And I, I'd like to try stamping on it and maybe pull some prints off of my jelly plate too and try it with some acrylics for that matter. Sky's the limit, right? <laughs> okay, let's try doing a few little strokes and maybe a couple little dots. Come in with this purple. I'm just looking for places to kind of make some little doodle marks. Hmm. Well, that's not bad. Drop in some yellow there. We got ourselves a little flower. Let me try to make a, a leaf. Yeah, I think this works a lot better with a smaller brush. Not a quill brush, but because even this, you have a little bit of water pooling around it, but it'll be interesting to see how that dries. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna pull this and put it to the side. And I am going to grab this again, which is dry now. But I really want to see about these paint markers. And I was very excited about this to see how this turns out. So let's do some mark making, shall we? <laughs> so I'm going to start with this black. And it um, has black text over the black marker so um, you can't read it but <laughs> luckily I have a white one too so it does say it's pigment ink strong covering force <laughs> sunproof and waterproof it is water-based marks on anything and in instruction number three it says uh, after shaking several times and pressing the tip to release air press the tip down for a while. So that's really helpful information. So I am gonna shake this up. And I've heard good things about these, so I am hoping that this is gonna be kinda of neat. Okay, so it is, by the way, 0.7 millimeters and extra fine. So I'm gonna just get the color out over here to the side and press it down for a while, like the directions say. <laughs> oh, I think we got something. Ooh, okay. Let's try 
this out. Now, come on. I'm pretty sure everyone's always been disappointed in what they got from Wish, but this is my first and maybe only order from Timu, although they do have some interesting stencils on there. I should have bought some, but I didn't. Now I'm kicking myself. <laughs> but that paint just comes right out of there. Now I am noticing after I get it on there, it seems to sort of soak in and it loses a little bit of its luster. But we'll just keep going and I'll see. And I'm just getting some contrast going on, so I'm making these little scribbly marks on the dark areas. And it writes nicely. It, I mean, it seems to really work just like a lot of them. You know, you get a paint marker. They pretty much all operate the same way. Uh, they just have different formulations, but it's got a nice firm tip. The ink seems to flow pretty well, and the only thing is it seems to kind of soak in, which is a shame, but that's why I'm on a never-ending quest for a marker or paint pen that just stays white, but it seems impossible. But I guess, you know, it's hard to find opaque white paint in general that doesn't let everything shine through <laughs> so maybe i'm just asking too much i guess okay in with the black let me give this a shake okay i'm gonna go over to my paper to the side get that ink coming through or paint rather that's a nice rich black So what do we want to do here? How about some little boxes? Make this kind of geometric in a way. That is a nice black. But usually black's not the one I have trouble with. It's just a shame. Do any of you have whites that you just love? because I really just love the pop of a good white on a dark background and it just seems to be really hard to find. It either looks great when it first goes down, kind of like this did, and I know there's tons of people who love these and I kind of love this one. This one's nice um, and the white's not bad. I mean, it's, it's okay. <laughs> But it's not worth mail order because I can have a good black one from a lot of different uh, manufacturers and the white just doesn't really do it for me. But I kind of like these boxes. <laughs> this is a new one for me. It's interesting. What do you think? We're going to have to schedule a live premiere for this video because it's going to be like a marathon. I've just been here all night unboxing Timu. <laughs> but what can you do? You got to try the stuff. What's the point if you don't know how it's going to work? Okay. So, last but not, well, almost last but not least, I have these uh, gold and silver paint pens. And these are metallic craft work pens. They're water-based, low odor. Um, it does say inks, well, they're conforming to a bunch of certifications. And it says do not... B-U-E-N 
but I'm thinking it says it's supposed to mean burn. So it says do not burn even when empty. And so that's a little scary, <laughs> but uh, let's give these a try. What the heck? So we're going to do the gold first. And I don't... Maybe it doesn't need to be shaken. It's already got something on the tip. Huh. This reminds me of the ones I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to kind of go up here. Just like this with some scribbly boxes. It has a little odor. I just smelled it. I don't know. It's really not too shiny. These are kind of a dud, but they're still fun to paint with. All right, I guess I don't need to shake it. This looks like it might be a little bit dry. Oh, it's not dry. The silver looks better than the gold, actually. And it's got kind of a thicker tip than these acrylic paint markers. It kind of reminds me of a Sharpie tip. I'm going to put in some dots through here. Why not? We'll have some fun with dots. And some gold dots too. Don't dots just change paintings? Okay, now for the main event. And I have my very nice cheap brush ready to go. So I have not tried this. It is thin and inky. <laughs> I'm very excited. Ooh. So it's got like a little spout. So you could put this into a little inkwell, which I do not have on hand right now. So what I'm going to do is put just a little bit here on my palette. Oh my gosh. You see that gold on there? Let me see. This smells kind of like, <laughs> kind of like the marker. Okay. I'm going to just dampen this in water and I'm going to blot off all the excess so I can try to get kind of a fine tip on this. I should use like a fine liner or something, but boy, you see that? There we go. Okay. I'm going to this is nice. I am going to make some circles here. Oh, wow. If I had a dip pen, I would be in love. And I actually got a dip pen not too long ago. That's going to have to come out of storage. Look at that. That's magical. This is the best thing I bought at Timu. It is so sparkly. It's wonderful. I'm going to put just another little drop down here. Oh, it is just wonderful. What kind of magic are they doing?
crest. Yes. I'm just going to use up this excess. I'm in love with this. Wow. Okay, lost the camera again, but wow. Hold tight to the 10 hour video. All right, rinsing off the metallic stuff. Okay. I'm gonna wipe that up with my baby wipe, but look at this. Okay, I have to bring this up to the camera so you can see that sheen. Look at that. It is gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, as soon as it goes down, it's incredible. So I'm back. Things are dry. And I'm going to do just a final overview. So these rice papers, they're very interesting to work with. I think they're going to be a lot of fun to experiment with. I brought forward the ones, um, the two that I did. So this is painting on the smooth side and this is painting on the rough side. And at first glance, I don't really see a lot of difference. Um, I do like painting with the smaller brush. There was a little bit of bleeding on the color, but overall it was pretty good. Now I'm gonna have to give this some more experimenting in the future <laughs> with my regular watercolors too, but I wanted to use just things from Timu today. So these are the two rice papers. This is the painting that I did with the watercolors and I just love that gold. So. Rice papers, out of 10, I think I would give them a solid six, um, just because they're fun to use. I was disappointed that they were wrinkled <laughs> in shipping, but um, I guess that's what you have to expect, especially with the price. I think I got uh, 50 sheets, so I've got plenty to play with um, in the future, and hopefully I can use it for some collage. So for what it is, um, I think it's gonna work really nicely. Now, the black and white acrylic painters, I would recommend it, but you don't have to buy this, you know, from Timu. You can buy it locally and get one just as good. The white, as you can see on here, once it dried, it faded quite a bit in some areas. And you can kind of see that, um, especially up here in the corner, it just kind of starts to blend into the background. Now you can still see it. So I would give this probably a seven out of 10. I mean, it's above average, especially when you get some of the, some of the markers out there just don't really have good coverage at all. So for what it is, I was um, pretty happy with it. So don't regret, don't regret the purchase. And I would buy again if given the choice. These, I would say no. <laughs> um, they're okay, but like these remind me of the ones I got from the Dollar Tree. And if I had any more time in this, what seems to be a hundred hour video, <laughs> I would do a swatch, but they are just like the Dollar Tree ones. They're not very metallic. They don't have a lot of shine to them and they're just very plain Jane pens. So these I would not buy again. This palette, I absolutely would buy again. For six bucks, I mean, come on. Now, there's probably all kinds of crazy additives in here. It does have kind of a glossy look, but these are decent sized pans. It's got a pretty nice neutral palette. You even get your little swatch card. I mean, this is just so cute, come on, for $6. You can't beat it. It is just a cute little palette. And the case can be used when you're done. And look at that little painting on the front. How can you resist? Now, the star of the show is this. 
This is my favorite thing that I bought. And this bottle is huge. So I'm going to have to get an inkwell now and dip pens and everything else because I'm going to be using this a lot. I love how it shines and it's such a rich color. It is low odor and it's got this really handy little spout. I mean, 10 out of 10, come on. It's awesome. And it was really inexpensive. I, I think I only paid like $3 for this or something. 60 grams. Um, I don't see like a name on it. It just says golden ink on the label. So if you do shop on Timu, try this. It's amazing. And then these two brushes, they're fun to use. They hold a lot of water. I'm going to have to use them more um, with my regular palettes. So the jury is still out completely, but they are a lot of fun. And I've always wanted quill brushes for the price, especially considering most of the ones you can buy here in the States are so expensive compared to other brushes you can buy. I think for a starter, for something just to play around with, these are wonderful. Um, I'm definitely going to be using these a lot more with my painting. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video, got some value out of it. Maybe some ideas on things you just have to have for a few bucks. You really can't go wrong. And uh, I'm glad that I, I went ahead and experimented and got myself a little haul, but this seriously, get it today. Like, what are you waiting for? Just, Log in there, put it in your cart, and call it a day. <laughs> but until next time, keep creating.